all this we pray in Jesus name amen all right now is the time for our speaker this morning and we are blessed to have pastor matthews with us this morning and many of you would know pastor matthews from the um, csm team at banda putri he's here this morning together with his wife melissa and the little baby too so pastor matthews is been serving for the last 16 years in the ministry and he's pursuing his masters in divinity and pastoral counseling he plays many roles in the area of the ministry i think from those of you who know him in the banda putri work i think a lot of the people who come look up to him as a person as a mentor as a person with a loving and a caring heart he ministers to the Tamil speaking congregation to the families in Banda Putri including house visitation and even providing tuition for the children out there he's also a teacher at the El Shaddai uh, refugee and learning center and a social worker and the founder of the J Messenger J Messenger is an organization focusing on changing lifestyle for the families in the B40 group and they adopt families and help to provide for their needs and counseling for them to have a better life and even uh, he has had many programs one of the initiatives that is ongoing is the for school going children they are raising funds for books as well as uniforms and for that even NLCC we have contributed towards that part of this event that is coming up so we just want to just uh, thank god for enabling us to have pastor matthews with us and i'd like to just welcome him this morning let's give him a hand together Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's uh, been a very busy day for the last one week. I'm so glad that I've... Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Okay, Hallelujah. Okay, so this is the first time uh, actually I'm coming out from my church uh, because my church, we don't have a pastor uh, to preach the word. But thank for God that currently I'm training an elder in my church to preach. So it's, uh, it's been so many years to uh, encourage one member to preach in front of the full feet because, uh, you know, like uh, Indian community, uh, we have to encourage them, we have to build them, we have to um, mentor them in all parts of the area so that they can come up and preach in front of the full feet. And to break the mindset of the only pastor can preach from the full feet. So I thank God for that. Today, my, uh, one of my elders has uh, agreed to preach in my church. So that's why it's the first time I'm coming out at the service time to preach in another church. So it's a, it's a big privilege for me to be invited in here and to preach among of you and to share my experience in Banda Putri as a pastor, as a social worker and also as a teacher. Hallelujah. And um, uh, before I start my preaching, I'm very so sorry for my English if, uh, because it's, a, it's also the first time I'm preaching in English outside. <laughs> Okay, I'm only, uh, I always preach in my church, okay. Uh, we are doing ministry among Banda Putri people. Uh, it's also known as Santosa, a dark area, a black area, or red yellow area. Okay, it's, uh, we can call Santosa in many ways. Um, one of the places that with huge number of social problems. It's uh, not an easy place to do ministry with. Um, I'm really grateful with the NLCC team, that coming to Santosa and Banda Putri to do the ministry in there. Hallelujah. So because it's not so easy, it's not easy place to start a ministry. Uh, many people, they choose don't do the ministry there. You know, because of the problem amongst the uh, people around them, 
uh, religious problem, then uh, social activity, uh, social problems that are happening there, and all types of people. You can see all types of people at there. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, uh, it's a great privilege to having an LCC member uh, to do ministry with that, with me at Santosa and Bandaputri, and we are doing great. We are doing great in Bandaputri and Santosa. Uh, it's uh, just to encourage uh, those who are doing ministry there. Uh, God is doing a miraculous work uh, around that place. Hallelujah. He's doing a great work. He's doing a miraculous work. Um, some of them, uh, they receive Christ. Uh, uh, hardcore non-believers. I always call them a hardcore non-believers because it's not so easy for them to accepting the Christ. In Santosa, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, there is a huge chances for you to get rejected by by your whole family. There's a one boy recently he came to my church and accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior and took baptism. Just recently he took baptism and he got rejected from his family. So his mother rejected him, his uncles all called him and, told, and scolded him. Uh, you know, he's going through many, uh, many problems at that. And there's a one girl in my, uh, my church, uh, when she accepted the Christ, the first time she said hallelujah, um, she, got, uh, you know, she got slapped by her grandfather, she got beaten by her grandmother. Okay, the whole family rejected her, but she still stands strong to the Lord. And she's now doing ministry in my church. Hallelujah. So just to encourage each one of you that we are doing great in Santosa. We are doing a great in Santosa. Many people are accepting Jesus Christ as a personal savior. And some of them, they agree to took baptism. I mean, so God is doing good. Hallelujah. So it's the um, end of the... We are going to uh, reach our end of the month, end of the year. Okay, so there's only one month. Above one month, uh, we are going to 2023. So, wherever I go, I ask three questions to all the members, include me. So, the first question I'm asking myself every time, every each month, I'm asking myself, I'm, am I living um, a good Christian life? It's a, it's a compulsory question for me. Because we are, uh, we are living on, um, you know, 365 days a year. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge here, a challenging day. Each day when we pass through, each day when we are go through, okay, we are need to ask ourselves, are we living a, a, Christian, a good Christian life, a word, a word calling of Christian life? Sometimes... At my place, when I see those who are living a Christian life, I'm always asking one question. Are they living a true Christian life? Uh, you know, a Christian life that gets saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I see the example? So most of the time, I couldn't see that. So that's why I'm always asking that. Am I living a good Christian life? Hallelujah. And second... The question that I'm asking to myself, what I've done as a Christian? So long, I am doing ministry for the past um, 17 or 18 years. I'm starting my ministry um, at the age of 17 when I went to this church, Cornerstone Ministry. My church is also known as CSM. Uh, it's a quite, uh, when um, um, the NLCC member, they came to me and said that we are also a CSM. Okay, then I'm also CSM. Okay, my church name is a Cornerstone Ministry. Okay, it's, it's look like a God's divine plan. The CSM and the CSM coming together and doing ministry. So it looks like a God's divine plan. Okay, so we are known as a CSM, Cornerstone Ministry. The reason my uh, pastor took the name because um, normally in my place, the Indians we known as a minority group. So we are at the corner. So normally the Indian church we know as a corner. All right. So my the goal of my pastor is from the corner, he wants to become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. He wants to become the main. So that is his goal, and God is doing great. God is doing great. Uh, from a corner, I'm a when I start the ministry, I'm a corner life uh, person. I don't mix with anyone. No, no one know me. No one know me. 
I'm just at the corner of uh, Santosa. No pastor know me. No members know me. I just doing ministry dad alone, silent. But years when the years passing through, God lifted me up. Hallelujah. God lifted me up. So many people now from El Sadai, uh, from El Sadai, from Malaysian care, uh, from all other parts of the Malaysian, they came to me and called me and asked me to be partner with them. Hallelujah. So God is bringing me from corner. He bring me to a cornerstone. Hallelujah. So God is good. Hallelujah. I mean, so let me share a few things about my life uh, just to encourage you. Uh, I'm coming from a dysfunctional family system. It's known as my family is not a perfect. My childhood is not easy. Uh, from my father is an alcoholic. Uh, he's a alcoholic dad. Uh, so it's not a good uh, life. When I'm growing up, I'm uh, growing up in a very bad situation. I got uh, two, uh, four siblings, two brother and two sister. Younger, I'm the elder one. Uh, so my mother, she's from you know, she's from estate, uh, from Kedah. Kadakulim, she's from Estate, so she's not don't know much about the city life. So when they migrate here uh, from Kada to Klang, my mother having a hard time to control my father. You know, my father is like from a village, come to a city, see all the city people, all the city lifestyle, he start to change. Okay, but at that at that time, he accepted Jesus Christ. He accepted Jesus Christ, but he's still living uh, the sinful life. So uh, that's why I'm all. Uh, that's why I, I always starting my year with these uh, questions. Am I living a good Christian life? Whenever I see my father, I learn many things from him. How to not live as a Christian? So um, the first question, uh, the first things I I see from my father is, you know, he always drink, but go to church and give tithes. <laughs> He's the kind of people like that. He will give. Plenty of money to church, a big amount of money to church. He's a businessman. He's a businessman. So uh, whenever you go to the church, okay, uh, he will give money. He give big amount of tithes. He bless all the pastors. He bless everyone there. He bless the poor, the needy. And the next moment, he will be in the bar drinking. <laughs> so that is his life. Um, we have my father and mother planned to separate it, uh, for seven times. Okay, uh, they plan to divorce for seven times. Each time they try to divorce, they will get separated. Okay, but thank God, God didn't uh, allow them to divorce. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a privilege because um, my mother is a very, um, she has a very strong willpower to change my father. And she believes Jesus Christ, the whole heart. Okay, she never let Jesus Christ down. He, uh, there's a one moment when my father, my mother was forced to worship another God and my mother said, refused to worship another God. Even though she's going through a big problem, even though the people that offer help uh, for her say that, okay, if you change your religion, if you come to my religion, I will help you. My mother still refused it. So she has a strong willpower. She never give up. She never give up on us. She never give up on my father. So she believes in God. She believed that God can do something. She believed that God can change our life. The world, my, my relatives, everyone think that we cannot survive in our life. My, this family, you know, uh, even one of my uncles said that this family, uh, you know, the son will become a gangster. The daughter will run away with someone. Okay, I, we will see that. You know, they, they literally said that. My father, brother. Okay, the elder brother said that. So it's like uh, the whole family, our childhood is uh, it's a very unhealthy childhood. It's a very, um, you know, uh, sometimes when I talk about my mother, I can feel the pressure because I always see her cry. From the morning to day, uh, morning to night, she always cries. So that kind of life we are living, but thank God, uh, when, I'm, uh, when I reach uh, the age of 15, God starts to change my father. So he changed his lifestyle, he changed his behavior, he started to accept Jesus Christ as a true Christian, as a disciple. Okay, there's a biggest difference as a Christian and disciple. Okay, so my father, from Christian, uh, from a Christian guy, become a disciple. He started to accept Jesus Christ, start to um, change his lifestyle, and, uh, and after 10 years, he become a pastor. 
Hallelujah. So all praise to the Lord. Okay, now he's saving with me. The, the thing is, he's a pastor, but I'm a senior pastor for him. <laughs> That's the things that are happening. Okay, so my father is helping me in ministry now. Okay, and my whole family, the, the, you know, my uncle said that my brother will become a gangster, my sister will run away with someone. You know, those who said that, now they are looking at us because my, bro my brother and sister, the whole family are serving, uh, serving the Lord. Hallelujah. My siblings are musicians, and they are doing very good in their life. My brother just finished, my, the youngest brother just finished his degree in law. In BAC, okay, and one, uh, my, uh, my one, uh, another brother, he finished his uh, diploma in radiography, okay, and then my sister is accountant, and my another sister is an HR, and God, uh, what I, why I'm saying this, because God can turn um, a family life, you know, in a glimpse of moment, he can do a miracle things, hallelujah. So most of the time when we are doing ministry among the people and we see their life couldn't change, when we see their life didn't change, they are still living the old life, we get so discouraged. We get so discouraged. We see like, how long I'm going to do this ministry? How long I'm going to fight for them? How long I'm going to advise for them? But my family is a good role model, a good example that if God is there, if God is in the midst of us, He can change our life. Hallelujah. He can change our life. My, my, uh, Jesus Christ changed my family life uh, in a glimpse of a moment. You know, it's like just a second. It took a second for Him to change my father. The whole family thought my father cannot change. The whole family thought that my father is the hardest guy to change. You know, whatever you say to him, whatever advice you give to him, how many pastors you bring and lay hand on him, he cannot change. But the touch of the Lord changes him. Hallelujah. So that's how um, my family changed. Okay, uh, from a dysfunctional family system, now we are a very happy family, a functional family system. Now they are looking at our family as a role model. Okay, many of them came to us, uh, some other church member. Uh, the church, who, um, there's a one particular church, because of my father's bad habits, they say, you cannot come to church anymore. So they just uh, ignore us. They just uh, said, okay, we have to send your family out. We have to send your family out because your father bringing a bad name for the church. So we have to send them, uh, send this family out. So, you know... At that moment, we don't have relatives, we don't have church members, we don't have church, we don't have anything. We are alone. My mother is alone, fighting for us and also for my father. She's alone. So it's like God himself came down for our family and uh, protect our family. Hallelujah. There's no one to protect our family, uh, no one to care for our family, but God himself came down. He came down and he protected a family. We can see him some on us. Hallelujah. So that's how God good. He's a so good God. He's a so caring God. Okay, uh, we cannot see any other God than him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. So that's my testimony, a simple testimony. There's a lot of things I can share about my life, but it's a very simple testimony that shows that um, don't give up on your ministry. Don't give up on your ministry. Sometimes it feels so difficult to work among the people, okay, to change their people's lifestyle, to change their behavior, to change their attitude. It's not easy to change their mindset. But when God is among us, God can do a miraculous thing. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? God can do a miraculous thing. But we have to pursue our goals. We have to keep on pursuing uh, our goals. We have to push our limits. We have to, um, you know, go beyond the boundaries. We have to go beyond the boundaries. We have to push our limits. We have to work hard for the kingdom of God. We have to always say to the Lord that I'm willing to do whatever work you are giving me, regardless my race, regardless my age, regardless my energy, regardless my sickness. Whatever things happening to me, I will just do whatever you are asking me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is my motto. Whatever, whatever happened, I don't care. 
I don't care. That's one quote that I like to use so much is I don't care. I really like that because whatever hard, um, you know how hard the life is, I don't care. I will do the work of the Lord. So there's a recent time, the, there's a one society, a particular religious society, they called my father and threatened him that, ask your son to stop all kinds of ministry, mainly the children ministry, if not, we will kill him. So it's happened on uh, just two years back, before the MCO. I'm doing, uh, doing ministry among the children. So there's almost uh, 40 to 50 children. Uh, most of them are non-believers. Okay, they're from Hindus, Pakistan, uh, Myanmar. Okay, all kinds of races. So they found out about me. But I, I never convert them. I never convert them. I'm very particular about them. Okay, I, I just teach them the good things from the Bible. And they don't like that. They don't like that, and they call my father and they threaten them. They threaten my father and say to him that, okay, you better ask your son to stop to do everything that you're doing now. Ask him to stop do the tuition. Ask him to stop do the children ministry. Ask him to stop to uh, do the Sunday school. Okay, you better ask him to stop everything. If no, we will do harm on him. Okay, it just happened recently, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So all praise to God, um, and even until now, no one can touch me. <laughs> no one can touch me because the Lord protect me. The Lord is with me. Okay, the Lord arms on me. Okay, He surrounded me in His wing. So no one can touch me. And you know what happened? Now, that area, uh, big people, they are supporting me. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are supporting me and they say, Pastor, you do whatever you like. We will be behind you. We will support you. We will protect you. No matter what other people say, you don't be afraid. We are with you. Hallelujah. That's why I like this quote. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care whatever people said about me. I don't care how many weapons are thrown upon on me. But I will still uh, pursue my goal and build the kingdom of God. And God is there. God is there. God is always with us. And God can do a miraculous thing. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to just share my experience uh, and using the word from the word of God. I'm going to share my experience and I really hope that my experience can encourage you and can um, uh, give you, a, uh, can motivate you to do more ministry. Hallelujah. So we are from the book of Acts. It's a familiar story. I know everyone, um, uh, they know this story. It's about Paul and Silas. Okay, so can you guess when I say Paul and Silas, uh, what I'm going to preach? There's a one particular story about Paul and Silas that many people like it so much. They like it so much. You know, it's a Great motivation story in the Bible. In the book of Acts, I see Paul and Silas' story as a, a great motivational story. Hallelujah. So can you guess? Yes, the prison story. It's a prison, very common story. It's a very, simp uh, it's a very simple preaching. Okay, it's a very common story. But it, you know, when I read this story... I always get motivated, I always get encouraged by the work of Paul and Silas in the prison. Okay, so uh, from the book of Acts, chapter 16. From the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 um, until verse 36. Okay, this is one of the great stories that we can read. Uh, we can read once. Okay, let me read from um, verse 16. Okay, the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16, verse 16. Once when we are going to the place of prayer, we are met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. Okay, so this is a story about uh, Paul and Silas. They are going, doing good things but end up in a bad situation. It's a good thing. What, they did a good job, actually. They did a good job. They saved a woman. Okay, they save a woman, okay, from, um, from um, 
from a dark, um, you know, from a dark spirit, save a woman, and he end up in the jail. So many people, you know, most of our situation like that. Whenever we do good, we receive bad. We do good, we receive bad. Okay, it's a common uh, thing that happening to us. It's a very common thing that happening to us. So we can see that the sea earn a great deal of money for owners by fortune telling. So verse 17, she followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, these men are servants of the most high God. Who are telling you the way to be saved? She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. And verse 18, she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. 19, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. Verse 20, they, bar, they brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city in uproar by advocating custom unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. Verses 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Verse 23. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into the prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. 24. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. And verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. 27. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his swords and was about to kill himself, because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. 29. The jailer called for light, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 31. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his house. 33. And that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and he, all his household was baptized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a great story. It's a great story. Okay, let's say, if it is happening now, can you believe this story? Let's see if it's happening now, at this place, at this moment. Can we believe this story? It's a really amazing story. It's a really amazing motivational story for each one of us because Paul and Silas in their lock situation. I use the word lock, L-O-C-K, lock. Okay, so many times when I preach this, um, this uh, word, this verse, many people who are hearing this word, they say that, Yes, we are in the lock situation and we don't know how to escape from that. We don't know how to escape from that. So, we are locked. L-O-C-K. We are locked, but most of them, uh, most of the Christians, they should be unlocked in their spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, most of us are in lock situation, but when the Christian they don't know how to unlock their spirit, Okay, they will end up in a bad situation, in a stress mindset, in a depression mindset, things like that. So for a brief moment, I will just explain what they use for lock, L-O-C-K. I'm just going to give you the word for L-O-C-K and we see how the Lord spoke with us. Hallelujah. So for L, when I see Paul and Silas, they are ordinary people, uh, ordinary people who want to do a lot for God. They want to build the kingdom of God. So whenever they go, wherever they go, their only goal is preach the word. Telling about God to everyone. Chasing out the demons. Heal the sickness. So that is the goal. You know, the goal of their life. 
they don't they don't care about anything else okay they don't care they don't care about their life they don't care about their friends how their relative will speak about that how their friends going to speak about that how they're going to earn money how they're going to live their life they don't care about that the only things that they care the most is preaching the word of the lord somehow i want to share the word of the lord and i want to touch as many people as i can and they enter the dangerous place you know now the romans okay they enter the dangerous place it's say like my area santosa santosa is quite a dangerous area to do ministry with so he entered the dangerous place and they boldly okay you know they don't afraid of anything they don't care about anything they don't care about the people they just preach they just do the miracle things around there and they end up in lock situation you know the hand and their foot was tied okay they cannot they cannot do anything they are in the tie, they they in the lock situation but what they do for all they lean on god so they lean on god that's the difference between most of the people and paul compared to the paul and silas most of the people in the times of situation and troubles they lean on person they lean on people they lean on situation they lean on problems all their minds is on their problem how i'm going to escape from this place what what the bad things have done in my life why i'm going through this why i'm grow, going through this kind of situation uh, what what things have i done god i'm doing good for you i'm praising i i'm always praising you i'm praying for you i'm praying i'm praising you i took fasting i read bible every day i trying to share your word to the people around me i trying to build the kingdom of god but why i'm going through this kind of situation why my family have to have go have go through this kind of situation but you know the best thing about paul and silas they didn't they don't ask this kind of question they just lean on god they just lean on god they just think i am accepting that i am okay with that i know i'm going to uh, my life going to be like this i'm prepare for it hallelujah i'm prepare for all kinds of tribulations i'm prepare for all kinds of problems those who are doing ministry i'm looking at nlcc as a church of ministry a church who are doing ministry a lot because um, i'm doing ministry with many people i'm uh, partnering with many people i'm doing ministry f- uh, with many people for the past 10 years and one thing about uh, nlcc when, when i see nlcc i can see the ministry heart there's a uh, many people who are willing fully do ministry in this place hallelujah uh, it's not happen uh, i i'm not saying this because to glorify or to just um, uh, giving praise on uh, i'm saying to my whole heart because i'm seeing many church in my life i went all the church i you know i like to travel to the churches i like to travel to the churches i like to mingling with other people so when i'm seeing most of the churches around here, here around the clang valley i'm seeing nlcc as the church which has a ministry heart hallelujah hallelujah a church that really want to do something for the lord a church that want to build the kingdom of god a church that uh, really tried push their boundaries push their limitation to build the kingdom of god hallelujah but one thing we have to always learn that when we lean on lord he will unlock our problems he will unlock our situation he will unlock all kinds of bondages all kind of dark spirits or everything whatever is in front of us he will unlock us hallelujah you know in banda putri i never preach in banda putri i never preach i am telling children stories in banda putri i am only telling children stories you know from the children stories there's a one lady she accepted jesus christ as a personal savior and she's ready to get baptized hallelujah sister sumedi she's now she went to the cameron now she's at cameron highland she's going to church but she got saved in banda putri ministry hallelujah you know from children story you know my children story is very simple i always use elephant and ant 
You know, I always say elephant and ant. It's a very simple story, a very small story, you know. Elephant and ant. Okay, the ant want to fight with the elephant. The elephant was so big, but the ant was not afraid of the elephant. Okay, the elephant was so big, sir. The size was so big. The elephant say, if I, you know, if I, I want, if I want, I can kill you. You know, I can kill you, you know, in a glimpse of a moment, I can kill you. But the ant say, you cannot kill me, ma. You cannot do anything. You know what they do? Okay, they start to fight. The elephant got so angry. Okay, stomped up, uh, all the ground. Okay, suddenly the elephant collapsed. <laughs> suddenly the elephant collapsed. You know what the ant do? He climb and go inside the ear. <laughs> he disturbed the balance and make the elephant fall down. Hallelujah. Okay, you know that, kind, that type of story make one lady saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if in Bandaputri, if I tell Jesus is God, accept Jesus Christ as personal savior, you know the people who have come against me, they have a, they have they have an open door to attack me. So what I do, I pray to the Lord. When I when when I to went unto Jury place, the first day I went there, I asked God, God give me a wisdom how I want to preach to them. I cannot publicly preach to them because I'm under supervision of other. Uh, people, they are supervise me. They are looking at me, so I cannot just, you know, I cannot just tell Jesus is God. Accept Jesus Christ. I cannot just tell that. So give me a wisdom, Lord. How I want to do that? And Jesus said, "Tell children story. <laughs> a children story for the big people. How come? All the adults you want me to tell children story, and through the children story, God's touching their hearts." <laughs> There's a few uh, few weeks before I tell that be like a child. I'm using a verse from Bible. I tell them be like a child. Okay, child is so innocent. They like to be playful all the time. They don't stress up about anything. They don't stress up about their life. So that's why God say, okay, let the children come to my uh, kingdom. Okay, so I, 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 you know, I encourage them be like a child. And after three weeks, one sister came. That day, pastor said, be like a child. I'm trying to do that. I'm so happy now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what Paul and Silas do. They lean on the Lord. They just lean on the Lord. They don't see the problems. They don't see the elephant in front of their eyes. They don't care about the elephant in, in front of their eyes. They just see the Lord. The problem can look big. We look like a small ant before, you know, in front of the problem, we can look as a small ant. We can look as we cannot do anything. But don't forget that God, you know, God, when He is on the cross, okay, He managed to defeat the devil who people think it, it, the devil is the conqueror of the world. So God is so powerful. So sometimes we, are like, we look like an ant and there is an elephant in front of us. But when we know the right place to strike, we can win in our life. Hallelujah. 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 So that's what Paul and Silas do. They lean on the Lord. In, in the, you know, all their ministry, whatever ministry he do, he just lean on the Lord. I mean, then oh, See, oh, I like this very much. Ointment come from praise and worship. Hallelujah. You know, ointment always comes from praise and worship. People think ointment comes from, you know, ointment is like a tiger bomb. Okay, minya chakapala. People like to use that. Minya chakapala, tiger bomb, things like that. But what we must understand is ointment always comes from praise and worship. You know, they are in a very dangerous situation. They got beaten. So he got beaten. That's the, that day all, uh, that time all, the ancient time, they got beat. Uh, whenever people beat them, it's so terrible. And when people like them, they are known as, uh, uh, like nowadays we call them the terrorists, right? They are known as like that. Okay, you see, they, they got beaten. Paul and Silas got beaten. They are injured, they are wounded, and they are chained up. They cannot do anything at the midnight. It's a, uh, clearly, it's a very cold, play, uh, cold night. It's a cold night. If I am in that situation, I only do uh, one thing. Hiya. Why am I like this? What did I do? Why, you see, my body all injured and I'm like this. I'm very fed up. You know, but what they did, they praise and worship. 
they just praise the lord they just worship the lord they just see upon the lord so they know that the ointment the tiger balm for them is praise and worship <laughs> the tiger balm the minya chakapala for them is praise and worship they know that from god my spirit can be healed hello of course their body cannot be healed but they know that my spirit can be healed through praise and worship so i just praise and worship for me there is a it's a great motivation story for me how can a person who get beaten who get wounded so badly and they can praise and worship the lord at the midnight you know it's a amazing story you know okay they praise they worship the lord they look upon the lord and they don't care about anything they just see the lord okay they just see the lord they say lord i'm thank for you i know that you are with me i know that this situation you allow this situation to happen to me i know that you are doing a miraculous thing hallelujah so the second the o letter is ointment come from praise and worship i mean so we always must ready to praise and worship the lord no matter what kind of situation no matter what kind of uh, problems we are going through what kind of troubles we are going through always praise and worship hallelujah now by god grace the people in bandaputri the people in taman santosa the hindu people the non believer they know how to praise and worship the lord there's a one particular song we sing anbu kurven okay we will love the lord the song title is that okay whenever we sing the song all the non believers will sing together with us they know the song they know the song and sometimes when i send some songs to their whatsapp some uh, sister they call me and tell pastor today i feel so down i feel like i want to commit suicide but when you send the song i feel so encouraged i feel so encouraged hallelujah hallelujah true just a whatsapp i only send uh, whatsapp videos i i speak a small uh, um, recording of one or two minute okay same like this the story i just use stories okay so i just uh, send the stories like that okay uh, there's one lady she want to commit suicide so i send a recording and also a song and when she heard that song you know she said pastor i really want to commit suicide today but i changed my uh, mind god is with me i believe that god can change my life <laughs> hallelujah see how the song can help people to build their life hallelujah how song can uplift our spirit how praise and worship can uplift our faith if non believers they themselves can be so encouraged with the songs that we are singing we are the christians we are the believer of god so just think how much the praise and worship can encourage us can lift our spirit hallelujah god is so good hallelujah see the third word is see this is very important control your emotion it's a very important you know paul and silas i'm really amazed with them when they praise and worship the lord the prison door was open the prison door was open the chain was loosed if i am there i will quickly run away of course the chain the, the door was open the jail door the door was open all my chain was loosened of course i will run away right okay but in, but whenever i read the story there's only one thing that always come in my mind why they didn't run away what make them stay there so what may what uh, what what is in their mind are they crazy god opened the door we always say like that wow god opened the door so it's a good opportunity for us to run away but you know do you know why they didn't run away have you ever wonder why they didn't run away in those days if the prisoners ran away the roman empire the roman king they will kill the god and the god family you know they will kill the god and the god family that's the custom that's a law on that day that's the law on that day so if this prisoner ran away if this prisoner paul and silas ran away the whole family the god fam the god and the families will be killed the whole family will be killed you know paul I, when i see paul wow so loving guy you know he's in a jail he got beaten by them he got flogged by them he got chained up by them but he still care for them he still think about the god 
is still t- he, uh, so just think how how good is emotion level is how stable is the emotion level is he is the guy who can control his emotion even through the hard, during the hard time during the hard situation he can control his emotion that's the main thing that we should learn from paul and silas we should learn that from them because we are people with emotions people who are always seeking love people who are always uh, need people to appreciate us we always seek appreciation for the people we always seek people to uh, say you are good you are doing well you are doing great but in ministry that not going to happen <laughs> in ministry life that not going to happen in ministry people will talk bad about us people will talk bad about the church people will always throw the stones at us and what we do we just ignore them normal we just ignore them but paul didn't do that they he chose to love them he chose to care for the god he know that if he ran away the god, you know the god and the families will be killed they will lost their life so what he decide it's okay i will stay in the jail i will stay in the jail he is someone who are very good in control his emotion amen hallelujah hallelujah and the fourth k k keep on going keep on going you know when i see paul and silas i'm very amazed with them just a moment ago they went to the jail because they do something for god and they're doing that again they preach the word to the whole family and giving baptize to them just a moment ago he went to the jail because he do the work for the god and he's still doing that again you know many people will give up many people they just give up they say okay no i don't want to do that anymore I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to give up. I want to, you know, I got I uh, let me take a time. Many people like to say this, let, let me take a time. Okay, just now I'm going through a big problem, so let me take a time, rest, then I will come back again. But he didn't do that. He took that opportunity to preach the word of God. He took that opportunity to tell the people above how good God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and you see when the k he keep on going to build the kingdom of god he keep on uh, run for the kingdom of god god did a miracle the whole family got baptized the whole family got saved and that is the purpose of christians that is the purpose we are here there is a purpose why we are accepting jesus christ as our personal savior not for only our benefit but for the benefit of others hallelujah each one of us are called by god each one of us are called by god to do his ministry to build his kingdom you know there is a no even a single person in here can go without doing ministry i believe that so much i believe that each one of us we have a purpose in our christian life each one that seated here today we have a purpose in our christian life god call us to do something it can be big it can be great it can be big things it can be small things but for god it it's a great things hallelujah so all of us are called by the god i mean people say that i'm the, i'm one of the youngest pastor in my area i'm a, actually i'm youngest i think i'm the youngest when i go to the clank pastor fellowship all the pastors are very old <laughs> you know all the pastors are very old they all all, all over 50 60 Hallelujah. And I'm the youngest. When I see them, I see the haya. What can I speak? <laughs> They're all very old, very experienced people. I'm the youngest. I I'm sitting there and some pastor will say this boy is very small what he can do. <laughs> you know, he's a very young. What he uh, what he can do. But you know, God is so good. I didn't get the first time I went to the you know first time I uh, start doing my ministry the whole people say he's so young he cannot do ministry he's so young I become a pastor at 24 years old I become an assistant pastor at 18 years old so 18 years old I become pastor 24 years old I become an assistant 24 years old I become a pastor so it's a quite young age for the pastor level for the people so when I do that even I'm feel very nervous when i the first time the, my pastor chose me as a pastor i become so nervous say no no i cannot do that all my members are older than me 
there's uncle and auntie sitting in front of me how can i preach to them they won't listen to us but god is so good is so good you know 60 70 years old people nowadays they come to me and ask counseling for from me hallelujah and those pastor who say that i'm so young that pastor went to my father and tell your i thought your son cannot do anything but he is one of the most active pastor in this area and he doing lot of things hallelujah it's not a pride it's a god grace the glory is all up under i cannot do anything at my school you know i'm at my school uh, at my school i am the one who don't know how to speak i don't speak at my school okay 11 years i'm studying my primary and secondary school 11 years i'm there people see me as uh, you know people thought that i cannot speak my friend thought i cannot speak because there's a one particular uh, classmate that's sitting beside me for 6 years i never speak with her even one word that's how quiet i am i no no one know i am in at that school there's a reason i met with my friends and my, i talk with him and my friend say you can speak ah <laughs> we all thought that you are mute you cannot speak we thought you got problem i say of course i can speak <laughs> you know so uh, that's how you know uh, god using me who cannot speak who don't speak at all and now i'm speaking a lot I don't speak when I, uh, I I don't stop speak okay when now people say he's like you know speaking 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 only so god is so good hallelujah hallelujah so they are locked they are locked in their physicals in physical situation they are locked but in their spirit they are unlocked that's why they get uh, you know they can be happy in a uh, bad situation it's a very important for us to be happy in bad situation hallelujah Hallelujah. So when we learn that L O C K lean on the Lord ointment come from praise and worship when we start to control our emotion and when we keep on going and pursuing our goals to build the kingdom of God God will unlock all the chains in our life. He will unlock all the bondages in our life. Whatever tribulation, whatever problems, whatever chains that we are going through, God can unlock that. Hallelujah. And I'm encouraging all of you that all of us have a purpose. All of us are called to do the care to build the kingdom of God. So one day all of maybe all of us will go to the heaven to live in the new kingdom, okay, new uh, Jerusalem, new earth. Maybe we can go there. But definitely if i am god let's say i am god i i won't be a god but i am let's say i am a god i will ask one thing what have you done <laughs> okay yes of course i am accepting you i won't reject you just because you're not doing anything but i want you to do something hallelujah hallelujah god's called us to do something god called us to do a miraculous thing no matter how old are how old are we no matter i'm old or young god using a young boy i'm very young okay i'm not experienced and many of you are here okay you are all more experienced than me okay you all know more things about me i'm so young but god if god can use me certainly god can use all of us certainly god can use every one of us each one of us to build the kingdom of god hallelujah hallelujah so uh always pursue your goal okay try to build the kingdom of god do what kind of ministry that we can get whatever ministry uh, one thing uh, that i can why i'm doing lot of ministry because one thing i will do uh, whatever ministry that come in front of me i will just do i don't pick ministry so uh, whatever ministry i start with uh, washing the toilet in my church seriously that is the my first things that i do in my church first time i come to church my pastor say you want to lead youth or you want to do the church work pastor give me church work i am no i don't want to do you know that's how i start clean the church painting the uh, church uh, cleaning the toilet all right then god lift me up from being a youth leader then children leader um, then a, a men's leader okay then i am starting doing uh, education leader lot of i also don't know what i've done <laughs> so many things god have bring me and today i'm here because of god grace hallelujah god is with me and god is with you so unlock your spirit 
Okay, don't be locked in a situation or don't be locked in any emotions or things. Okay, all the boundaries. Okay, unlock that and just go. God will open the door. Hallelujah. And I believe God is opening the door for this church. Hallelujah. God is doing a great things uh, in this church. Hallelujah. How many of you believe? How many of you believe it? Hallelujah. So God is good. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for all the good things that you have done for me. Okay, God is so good that your blessing and NLCC are blessing uh, Banda Putri so much that Banda Putri people lifestyle are getting changed. Hallelujah. Many of them are getting encouraged. And this year uh, we are going uh, to do a children program. Every year we are doing that. That's also very. That's also a very, uh, you know, hand of God. You know, I, I start ten years before. I start uh, giving them toys. I start giving the children toys. Then the next year I ask God, God, I don't want to give toys. I want to give toys and bags. Okay. Then God bless me fifty school bags. I start to give the children 50 school bags. Then the next year, I ask God, God, I don't want to give uh, toys and 50 school bags. I want to give 100 school bags. And then God give me 100 school bags. Then the next year, I ask God, God, I don't want to give, me, give only toys and bags. I want to give uniforms for them. Then I start to give uniform for 50 children. Then I upgrade uh, God. I think sometimes God will look at me and say, this guy, a uh, lot of things I want to do. Then, uh, then the following year, I said, God, God, I don't want to just give toys, uh, bags, and school uniform. I want to give school books as well. And now we are giving school books. From last year, last two years, we are giving school books with uniforms, with school bags, and also toys. Uh, so uh, this year, we plan to give for 250, 150 to 250 children. Our target is 250 children. Uh, we already booked the place, uh, the day one all. Uh, God is doing good things. So each for each children, we are giving a watcher, a watcher, a 100 ringgit watcher. So through, with that watcher, they can buy a school dress, they can buy school bags, shoes, and everything they want. All the school items they can buy. So for each children, it's 100 ringgit. So if you want to contribute, you can do so. Okay, so thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you so much for your donations and funds. Many children are getting blessed by your contribution. Halia, so if you want to contribute, okay, you can ask. The account number from uh, Sister Beng Chu. Okay, she has my account number for the children party. All right. Uh, the children party is on 3rd December. Okay, and, I'm, uh, and I know you're also having a, a program on that day. Okay, so keep on praying for us. Keep on praying for Banda Putri. God is breaking the chains there. God is unlocked. Many things are there. And your prayers, your supports are much needed in Banda Putri and Taman Santosa. So God is good, doing good things. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Pastor Matthews, for bringing us the, the four keys to unlock the kingdom of God. And um, that is to lean on God for all that we need to do and to, to depend on Him. And also the ointment of praise and worship and controlling our emotions to keep on going, the lock, L-O-C-K. Wonderful. Praise the Lord for the transforming, transformational testimony of your family and yourself in uh, serving the Lord in your church as well, and uh, seeing how wonderful God has actually done in your life from a young um, person to a pastor, yeah? So praise God for that. And um, we have heard so much and we have worked together with Pastor Matthews um, in many ways in Panaputri and Taman Sendosa. And I always remember how um, Pastor Matthews came to the joy workshop uh, of uh, Julie and uh, Wilson, how he actually first uh, came into contact with um, Panaputri ministry. And that was just him going around uh, in, in your motorcycle. I remember you told me with your friend and uh, that's how you first started um, knowing us and working together from then on. Yeah, praise the Lord. And um, yeah, come. Let's just. Why don't we just rise as we we want to pray for you as well as your family and church um, as we close. Come. Let's just. Um, why don't you just come to the front? Um, come, leaders. 
We just want to pray a prayer blessing for you. Come. Father, we want to thank you for Pastor Matthews and CSM, the Cornerstone Ministry in Banaputri and Taman Sentosa. Father, we know you have placed him there for a purpose, Lord, to touch the community, Lord, to do your kingdom work, Lord, among the family, among the individuals. Father, we are so thankful, Lord, that even as, as you have placed him there, Father, we came together, Lord, uh, in this ministry in Banaputri, to, to, to reach out and to touch the community through the ministry that we are doing together. Father, even it is no coincidence, even the name itself, the name of the church and our ministry, CSM, the Cornerstone Ministry and our, and our community service ministry. Father, it is a marriage, Lord, that you have put together to touch the people there, O oh Lord. So, Father, we are so thankful and we pray, Lord, even for your hand to continue to be upon Pastor Matthews, his family, Melissa and uh, baby Azil. Lord, that we know, Lord, that you will continue to bless this family and use them, O oh Lord, even to reach and to work together to serve your people and in his church, O oh Lord. Father, we are so grateful and so thankful to him. Lord, may your hand of blessing of good health continue to be upon him and as you continue to provide for him in all his family, in his personal life, as well as his ministry, O oh Lord. Protect him as well and bless him richly with good health, Lord, even as you enable him to do all that he has uh, done for you and continue to do as well, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. For the benediction, finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. God bless you and be good and always be good to others. Amen. Testing, testing. As you, um, if you want to give unto the ministry, the children party and also the uniform and books that uh, Pastor Matthew is doing, the box is just at the foyer. Thank you. King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb